I'm the reason they are no longer friends and they don't know. It was our freshman year of high school. I was friends with these girls. Let's name them Megan and Ella. Me, Megan, and Ella were friends since preschool. We all clicked and stick together. We would always do everything together and never leave each other out, and I loved that. But one day they decided to do something without me, and then that turned into two days and three. They got closer, had their own inside jokes, and I felt left out. My ego was too big to say anything at the time, so I wished I could break them up, but then I realized I could. That's when the torment began. So Megan was really blunt and straightforward. She was a Sagittarius. Her words hurt and most people don't like her. Ella was too afraid to say her opinion. She was too nice and she wanted to get along with everyone. She was a Pisces. I was a Scorpio. I was really good at manipulating, so I took this to my advantage. I decided I was going to pin them against each other, stretch the truth, lie, and make the things they do sound worse than each other, and then take one girl for my own. I was tired of being in a trio anyways. So one day we all went shopping and Ella put on this dress. So one day we all went shopping and Ella put on this dress. It looked really ugly on her, I'm not gonna lie. It was this ugly yellow print dress. She asked us what she thought and she liked it a lot. Megan just straight up said it was ugly. Ella looked her and I called Megan out telling her she was too harsh. Megan said she was just being honest as possible. I brought Ella back into the dressing room to help her undress. I whispered to her, don't listen to her. I don't think this dress is ugly. I just think it doesn't suit your features to the fullest. And Ella said, thank you. I also told her, Megan's always seemed jealous of you anyways. You are the prettiest, but don't tell her I said that. And she promised me she wouldn't. Soon, Ella started venting about her and I agree with everything. Then we left the dressing room holding arms. Then we continued walking throughout the mall and Megan was behind the whole time. It was so funny. So this other time we went to Six Flags and Ella is known for being scared on rides. Me and Megan wanted to go on the roller coaster and we did. We practically forced Ella to. I told Ella she was being super sensitive. And Megan laughed and agreed. This time, Megan was closer to me. So we all wanted to go on this roller coaster and Ella didn't want to. I told her that she was being too sensitive and ruining the fun and that she needed to go on it. Then she looked sad and forced herself to go. Megan said good for me that I was doing this. But little did she know this is actually gaslighting and invalidating Ella's feelings. Ella ended up fainting midway of the ride. And when we got off, she puked violently. I just looked at her and Megan laughed. I patted her on the back and said she'll be okay. Me and Megan this time linked arms after that and we continued going on rides. Now Ella was left behind. So over the course of two weeks, I kept doing this and they didn't catch on. Some days Ella would ask to hang with me and then some days Megan would. They practically weren't friends anymore. I realized over time that I didn't like Megan, so I thought of the perfect plan. So one day I went on a sleepover with Megan. We ended up having fun, but she was mega insensitive and selfish, which I didn't like. So she ended up falling asleep first, of course. And I ended up taking her phone and unlocking it with her finger. She's a heavy sleeper, so she didn't know. So I went to me and Megan's messages and I began typing. I'm really sick of Ella. She's so sensitive and annoying. To be exact, I typed, I'm really sick of Ella. She's so sensitive and annoying, and I think she deserves to be punished. I don't think she was supportive enough with my blank story, so I'm going to hire somebody to blank her. But don't tell her, though. Keep it a secret. Then, I delete the message on her phone, and then after that, I sent out a message on my phone saying I'd promised. Soon after that, I texted Ella telling her I needed to talk to her tomorrow, and that I was important. So, I woke up the next day and said goodbye to Megan and left. I met up with Ella and started to fake cry. Showing her the messages and Ella was mad. I told her that we couldn't tell her though, she'll deny it. And Ella said okay. So we vowed to ignore her. I spread the screenshot throughout the entire school and no one liked her after that. She accused me of lying but I stood my ground and told her what she was doing was messed up, cruel, and sick. She just stood there. She ended up getting a week of suspension since this reached the principal. After that, we never saw her again. Pretty sure she transferred schools. I don't know if I should tell Ella that I did everything though. Should I? Leave advice for this girl in the comments down below. Follow for more story times. I was doing the dirty with my stepfather and my mother caught us. So my mom had been divorced for about five years now and she wanted to get back into the dating picture. She met this guy named Rob. Rob was a muscular guy with blue eyes, black hair, and pale skin. He was attractive, I'm not gonna lie. He kind of reminded me of Damon Salvatore from The Vampire Diaries. He was a pretty charming guy. He was very flirtatious and he would even flirt with me sometimes, but my mom didn't know that. One day, he said, let's go on a date, platonically, you know, to get to know me better before I propose to your mom. I was happy for them, but part of me was also jealous. So I wore my tightest red dress, red lipstick, painted my nails red, and did my hair extremely pretty. When I walked out, he literally choked on his water and said I looked nice. We ended up going to Olive Garden and everything was fine. He ended up paying for me as well. We had an amazing chat, and he touched my leg a couple of times, which means I knew I was getting closer. So the next day, I woke up to my mom screaming in the kitchen. I was scared because I didn't know what the freak was happening. Then I heard her crying and I ran downstairs. I woke up and my mom screamed and then she started crying. I ran downstairs worried because I didn't know what the freak was happening. I heard her crying from the kitchen and I turned the head and she was sitting there hugging Rob. I said, good morning, what's going on? She then showed me the ring sobbing and said that she was engaged. I congratulated the both of them, but at the same time I felt jealous and heartbroken. 
I wanted Rob for myself, not vice versa. I don't know why my mom had to date somebody so attractive in the first place. So I had to think of some way to ruin the relationship before the wedding. And I got the perfect plan. So one day while my mother was working over shift, I went upstairs and heard that Rob was coming over. I ended up putting on some lingerie, setting up some red lights, and setting up candles. I heard Rob go through the front door and I said, Rob, can you come up here for a second? And then he walked upstairs. My room was pitch black at the time, so he couldn't see what was going on. He came into my room and asked if everything was okay, and then I turned the light on. He looked shocked and said that we shouldn't be doing this. I pulled him into the room, threw him on my bed, and locked the door. Rob had said we shouldn't be doing something like this, and I ignored what he said. I ended up locking the door and pushing him onto my bed. We started making out for a really long time. We got touchy, and then one thing led to another, and we ended up sleeping together. Honestly, I had no regrets. It was one of the best moments in my life. And that's how I knew I really was in love with Rob and that he should have been mine and not my mother's. I wanted my mother to be happy, but not this happy. So we both ended up falling asleep on my bed and then my mom came home. She opened the door and let out a scream. We both woke up shook. He got up and tried to explain that this wasn't what it looked like, but my mom screamed and said that he took advantage of his daughter and that he was a rapist and that he needed to leave. She threw the ring in his face and she literally pulled a gun out of her purse and pointed it at him. I told her to stop but she wouldn't listen. He ended up leaving and never coming back ever again. I sent him a friend request on Facebook and we talk regularly. My mom has no idea about it and we've been dating for 5 months straight. Follow for more story times. My boyfriend's best friend tried to ruin our relationship. So I saw this guy in class on the first day of school and wanted to know his name. He was really cute. I asked my friend what his name was and she said his name was Aiden. He was tall, had tan skin, straight black hair, a perfect jawline, and hazel eyes. Every girl was fawning over him. So one day I went to a party and I bumped into him accidentally spilling booze on him and I apologized. He just started laughing and said it was okay. When we started talking, we clicked immediately. You know that feeling when you're going to have a ride with that person? Like emotionally and you both grow? Yeah, that's what I had. We gave each other our Snapchats and we started talking. Regularly. Then some random girl added me on Snapchat. She sent me a chat and she asked if I was dating Aiden. I said no and then she sent a dead skull emoji. I just ignored it because I'm not going to sit here and entertain that. So then I added her back and looked on her story and there was a photo that she posted of her kissing Aiden on the cheek. I forwarded it to Aiden and asked if they were dating. He started typing and then he left the chat. You will not believe what happens next. Come back for part two. Added her back and checked her story and it was a picture of her kissing Aiden on the cheek. I forwarded it to Aiden and asked if they were dating and he entered the chat for a millisecond and then left the chat. I texted him a question mark and he didn't respond. The next day at school he tried to talk to me and I looked him straight in the face and walked away and ignored him. He texted me while I was ignoring him all day and I left him on delivery until he FaceTimed me. I explained I did exactly what he did and he apologized and said he was busy for the moment. He explained to me that his best friend added me, Sophia, but that was his ex and they weren't dating. I said okay, but I was kind of suspicious about it. So prom was coming up and Aiden had the chance to ask me and he did. So the next day at school, I saw Sophia all over Aiden and I figured me and Aiden would be in the talking phase, but I guess not. When I got out of class, Aiden tried to say hello to me, but Sophia grabbed him by the arm and dragged him away. This happened multiple times throughout the day, until I got sick of it. During 7th period when Aiden came to pick me up, I literally confronted her about it and told her to stop. And she just looked at me in shock. And then she walked away. After that, she didn't try anything or so I thought. Come back for part 3. So I confronted her and she looked shocked and just walked away. I thought she would stop bothering us from now on, or so I thought. So I ended up getting ready for prom the next night and she texted me a knife emoji. I was confused but just ignored it. So we ended up going to prom and Aiden picked me up in his limo. He looked so hot. The first thing we did there was take pictures at the front. When we walked in, Sophia said hi to Aiden and then just snatched his face and kissed him. Without consent, mind you. He pushed her off and said back off. She said she was confused because he's been texting her and flirting with her. He said she was lying and she ended up pulling out her phone and showing me screenshots of the conversation. I looked at him and then ran off. After that, he chased me and then clarified everything. He said that those were faked and photoshopped. I asked him to show me proof since I didn't believe him. And he showed me their actual conversation on iMessage. We then walked over to her and then he cut her off. She ended up making a scene crying begging for him back. But we just walked away. Luckily, we were able to bounce back and end up having a good time at prom. Take it from this story and don't be one of those girls. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. I tried to kill her because she bullied my sister. So I have a twin sister and we're identical. We went to separate schools this year. We didn't like to be together because we were compared to each other all the time and we spent plenty of time together at home. So it was just refreshing. We were in middle school, mind you. So one day I went to pick up my sister and she looked extremely sad and mad. She got into the car and I asked her what was wrong. She literally ended up screaming at me, telling me to leave her alone and stop asking her dumb questions. 
I just let her be because I didn't know what the heck was going on. So we got home and she immediately took a shower. She got her phone on her bed, so I went through it and she was getting a bunch of messages like death threats, telling her she's fat and ugly, etc. Just a bunch of lies and mean things. I wanted to figure out the source of who was sending these messages and it was this girl named Rebecca. Apparently Rebecca was the most popular girl at their school. So I thought, why not catfish her and become friends with her and figure out some way to get revenge? So I DM'd her with a fake account on Instagram and you will not believe what happens next. Come back for part two. I messaged her on Instagram with a burner account saying she was pretty and asked to be friends and she agreed. The burner account I was using was a catfish account. I usually use it to talk to sugar daddies on there and scam them. The girl was super pretty and she didn't live in America. That's why it was harder to actually find out whether or not she was a catfish. But anyways, this is where everything started. I got most of her secrets, her weaknesses, her fears, etc. The one thing that stood out to me the most was she was allergic to peanut butter. And this is where I got my brilliant idea. I was going to tell her to meet me behind the school and I was going to give her the cupcake that had peanuts in it, obviously. She said okay. So I ended up waiting the next day behind her school and she called me and I answered. She noticed it was me who answered and asked who I was. I told her I was the girl, but I didn't use my real identity. She told me I looked like my sister and I said, huh, that's funny, I don't know who that is. She was upset that I catfished her, but she said whatever because now she looked prettier than me. She snatched the cupcake out of my hand and she began to eat it. A couple of seconds later, she puked the peanut butter up and she was gasping for air. She fell and asked me to help her, but I slowly stepped back and rode off my bike. You will not believe what happens next. Come back for part three. A couple of seconds later, she puked the peanut butter up and she started gasping for air. She asked me and begged me to help her, but I slowly stepped back and rode my bike away. I wanted to save her, but only because I didn't want to get in trouble. She didn't deserve to be saved. She was a shitty, shallow person. After that, I checked the news and refreshed Google to see if there was anything, but I didn't see anything. She didn't contact me on her Instagram account for about a week, so I haven't heard from her. She didn't post either, and her friends didn't inform me, so I guess I wasn't that important to her. So my sister came back from school one day and told me that Rebecca was in a coma in the hospital. And she said she was kind of happy because the bullying stopped. I was going to tell her it was my fault, but I didn't trust her enough. Not yet, at least anyways, when the case was fresh. It definitely seemed to me that Rebecca was the problem, all along. I'm just really glad that she's not getting bullied anymore and that my plan worked. Take this as a lesson to treat those good around you, because if not, karma will definitely creep up on you. Follow for more story times, and follow my Instagram as well.